Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, we're getting uh, started slightly late. We had a little bit of a technical problem. Uh, the time is now 7.23 p.m. I'll call the meeting to order for the Marion Township Board of Supervisors, August 27th, 2020 Bye. meeting. Nice. The first item on the agenda is usually the Pledge of Allegiance, which we are going to be omitting because of doing these meetings via Zoom and telepresence because of the ongoing concerns around COVID-19. <laughs> and Governor Wolf's stay-at-home orders and social distancing requirements. Um, first item on the agenda itself is to approve the minutes of the July 30th, 2020 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make the motion to approve those. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the August 22nd, 2020 workshop meeting. I'll second. Uh, I didn't make a motion. Do you want to make the motion? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think Irene like made it. <laughs> I, Irene made the motion. I'll, I'll okay. second. <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next order of business is to approve the payment of the bills for August 2020. I'll make a motion. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, at this time, we'll open up the floor to public comments. Uh, we have two participants from the community on, Dan Klein and Bob Fletcher. Uh, I know from prior to starting the meeting, Bob, uh, I don't know about Bob, but I know Dan does not have a public comment. Uh, Bob Fletcher, if you use the uh, raise your hand feature or the, if you want to put something in the chat, uh, if you have a public comment, please let me know and we'll, we'll go from there. Otherwise, uh, we'll begin progressing with the rest of the meeting. Um, Sue, did we have any email public comments? There were no public comment emails. Okay. Okay, so far, nothing in the chat. Okay, just as a, a reference, the files for public view, the meeting minutes, the financial reports, they're all out on the Google Drive in the public directory. That is in the chat, as well as once this is posted to YouTube, it is in the description of the videos. Um, with that said, we'll go into item number one. Uh, the emergency declaration that we made in March at the Board of Supervisors meeting is still in effect and remains in effect until we as the board uh, decide that it is no longer needed. Uh, based on just everything that's going on currently, I would suggest we continue to leave that in place until we, we deem that we're, we're in the clear and would be able to return to some semblance of normality. Okay, not seeing any objections, move on to the next item. Uh, the PennDOT winter maintenance contract, which we get to plow Christmas Village Road, which is a state road uh, during the winter season, is up for renewal. We're looking at the 2020 through 2025 years on this contract. The 2020 to 2021 amount would be $3,562.88. The 2021 to 2022 contract amount would be $3,669.75. 2022 to 2023 would be $3,779.85. The 2023 to 2024 contract amount would be $3,893.25. The 2024 to 2025 amount would be $4,010.05. Uh, the contract is, is pretty much the same thing every time we go through the renewal effort of this. Um, Andy, I'm sure you've probably gotten to, to look at it. It's it's standard. It's the same basic thing that we had in, in years prior, just with a difference in years and dollar figures. Do you have right. any, any it, concerns it is or objections? The, the fees, as far as I know, are standard fees. Hmm. Yeah, I, I've seen them in other municipalities too. And then I don't know how long Christmas Village Road is, but um, I mean, I've been on Christmas Village Road, but th these numbers don't seem out of line to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I having I just looked at another township and it was similar. Okay, I was gonna say having read over it, I don't have the the background of the other townships, but I I don't think there's anything out of sorts on that. It's it's a state road, but it's it's kind of on our, our direct path of plowing anyway. So it's 
one, whether it's us or the state, it's just good that it gets done. We just have the added bonus of getting the, the kick, kind of the, the residual money from it. It looks like the part that's in Marion Township is four and a half miles. Yeah, okay. 3,500 for four and a half miles, it's pretty, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Irene, Jim, do you have any questions, comments, or concerns around that? No, I'm just curious how they came up with their math. So it, it must be based on a- It's probably by a per footage thing. Inflation or something. Because if you do the math, it's not the same amount of increase every year. So hmm. it's okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sure if we ask somebody, we can get an answer, but it yeah. might, <clears throat> might be more complicated than it's worth. Um, I don't have any objections. So I'd, I'd actually motion to, uh, to approve the PennDOT winter maintenance contract for 2020 through 2025. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is the treasurer's report. Um, Irene, I'll turn it over to you quick and I'll actually, I have the, the workbook that we had for the reports. I can share that out on the screen so that we can discuss it if you want to get started. That'd be great, yeah. We've been trying to work on a better format so that it's a lot easier for everyone to understand bills, um, deposits, as well as um, uh, balances. And uh, this is the first uh, table, which... Uh, this Peter's kind enough to show me how to um, work with a pivot table. And uh, we think this is kind of the easiest thing to uh, review. So it gives us total bills paid. Yep, and this is, this is the income. I have the income up right now. I did that, that one as, a, as an example too. So there's, there's two that we have pre-populated. There's the one for the bills. <laughs> for last month, which we actually had fewer bills than we had incomes, which is actually yeah. fantastic. Um, but we have this and the way the pivot table works is it's a slightly condensed format than what we're used to seeing in some of the, the reports that are in the minutes. Uh, and we can keep it in this format or we can actually expand it and have it show each one of those things in the code of accounts. So rather than being in the, the, the kind of the tabular format that we're used to seeing going from, from left to right, we could get the same information in a, a slightly different view. The benefit on this being is it takes about a tenth of the time to oh. generate that report. We just want it a very easy format for people to be able to review it. And I think at the next couple of meetings, Sue was kind enough to forward some information with respect to what other townships do. And I definitely think it's worthwhile for us to publish what the balance is on the accounts um, and perhaps even just say, you know, total sum of bills paid, total sum of income received, um, etc. I think that would be very worthwhile. And then everyone can take a look at the specific numbers if they want to do so. Of course, everyone's entitled to uh, an accounting at any point in time if anyone ever wanted to put out a right to know request. So, uh, but we're trying to make that very easy for the public to understand where the money's going. So the, of the examples that Sue sent over, I think the, I, I would want to go for kind of a combination of what North Heidelberg, Maiden okay. Creek, and Lower Alsace do. Yep. Um, really what would reflect in the minutes is that the treasurer's report was read, accepted, voted on, et cetera. Um, but the actual treasurer's report, the format for that would be we'd have this sort of thing available. And then we would recap in the meeting what the starting balance was on the accounts, what the ending balance was the, on the accounts, the total number of uh, debits and credits for the account. And then ideally, and this is, this is me thinking very long term once we're a little more situated with that, um, like quarterly or even semi-annually having a, a, a budget recap that we're X number of months through the year, we're either on forecast or not on forecast for for budget items. If there's anything that's an outlier, let's discuss. And if we're either way over or way under on something, maybe see if there's something that we can do to course correct that before we, we go to budget time at the end of the year and go, oh, wow, how did this happen? Um, for the record, we don't have any of those because we've actually been, been monitoring that pretty closely as we've done some of the other QuickBooks related work. But I think it's a, it's a good exercise to be in the routine of doing. Absolutely. And Dan, um, 
Peter shown me a little bit on how to do these pivot tables. So um, it, it was so much easier than generating some of the other reports. So I think it's going to be something that you and I are going to easily be able to do. Okay. Yeah, Dan, Dan is nodding in agreement. Um, so with that said, um, I don't know if we, do we have enough in place that we want to, do we, do we have enough to make a motion around adopting that other format or Andy, is there anything that we have to do procedurally if we're going to switch up the, the format of that particular report? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would, I would just formalize it in a, in a verbal resolution, which is a vote. I don't think you need to get any more formal than that. Okay. So, Jim, do you have any thoughts or feedback or likes or dislikes about this particularly, or do you think that would be a good? I think that's a great idea. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll make the motion to going forward, switch over to using this format, the pivot table format for the financial reporting, and then to start uh, either at next month's meeting or the following meeting as soon as possible to start doing that, that treasurer's report. Um, I'll second that motion. Yeah. I'll give it to Jim so if I can okay. add something. <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, is there anything else that you'd like to cover from a, a treasurer's report standpoint, Irene? Um, no, I'm just excited because we're caught up and uh, I'm looking forward to being able to report out totals and have that in that nice easy format so yeah I'm, i gotta say i'm excited that we're i think we're a lot more prepared for at any given time to to be able to handle an audit because we went into 2020 from 2019 in kind of a rough rough shape on on how we were left on certain items um, which actually brings us to our next point the quickbooks stuff that we've been working with rick rule on is the next item on the agenda do you want to to recap that a little bit Irene? Everything is is caught up in order. Rick is uh, absolutely wonderful in being available to us by phone. So he's uh, taught me quite a bit of stuff about the program. And I think uh, I've got uh, hands all on it now. And he's certainly available for consultation. Um, wonderful resource in the community. Okay, so the, the next thing that we have is actually related to that. And uh, it was the, the break for executive session to discuss the, the, the potential around some litigation for certain things or the, the risk for litigation around certain things. Um, Dan and Bob, I'm going to do the breakout room and you unfortunately are going to be kind of pushed off to the side for a moment. You'll, you'll still be in the meeting. I know, I'm sorry. Um, you'll still be in the meeting uh, and we'll try to keep it brief, but uh, for the, the sake of confidentiality, we have to kind of segregate that and then stop the recording. So uh, bear with me while I get that completely configured. So that okay. there we go. Okay, so far, we've got Irene, we've got Sue, we've got Andy. So as soon as Jim joins, we will pause the recording and get into it. There's Jim. Hey. Hey, Jim. Okay, so everybody's here. I'm going to pause the recording. Okay, we have finished the executive session. We were discussing a matter of potential litigation or legal concern. Uh, we have come to a consensus, and I, I think we're in a good spot there where no action will actually have to be taken. Uh, we thank everybody who was dialed in on the meeting for their patience during that time, and we'll move back into the normally scheduled agenda items. Next item on the agenda is the RKL audit for 2019. Uh, there was a lot of work done by Irene and Sue around this, and we're at this point finally done with it. So barring anything else that they have some last minute questions on, we should be receiving, a, I'd imagine, a letter in the next couple of days stating that, that satisfactory completion. Uh, Irene, do you want to say any additional words on that? Thank you, Sue. 
Thank you. <laughs> we'll we'll uh, be going into 2021 a lot better, I think, a lot yeah. better prepared. I completely so. agree. I think uh, your efforts and Sue's efforts and really everybody that was kind of working towards that, that end goal, uh, the, it's going to show when we go to do this next year. It's not going to be the fire drill that it was this year. It's going to be a very simple exercise that RKLs provided the information. They come in one day, they look at it, and they, they go away happy. Yeah. Um, uh, with, that, with that said, one of the things that we do need to discuss is our contract with RKL is actually up at the end of this year. So we would have to either renew with RKL or get quotes. And I know, Irene, you've actually started soliciting quotes from other, other firms just as a, a comparison before we go through that. Uh, but getting another firm or RKL to do the auditing as we've had done the past three years. Yeah, I'm, I reached out to Aikens Accounting. Um, I'm going to reach out to Herbine. And I think another agency that does um, municipalities, I want to say is Long and Barrel. And of course, we'll get another uh, quote from RKL. It's kind of difficult to find accountants that do uh, municipal audits. So, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, keep us in the loop. I look forward to yep. discussing that next month. If we have quotes in hand uh, well before the end of the year, I'd like to like to have yep. a little bit of runway left in case there is an issue that comes up. Yep. I'm going to try to get the quotes done by November. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, next up is the pension plan audit, which Sue has been working very, very hard on. I know you've been in, in constant contact with that particular auditor from the <laughs> Department of the Auditor General. I um, should know his children. <laughs> by the end of this, you probably will. Um, so uh, do we have anything else that we want to add to that? The, and just for the record, for anybody uh, who's either on the meeting now or, or watching this at a, a later date, um, a lot of the, the extra work from the pension plan audit came around from the fact that we had to switch where the pension plan was uh, several times in a short period of time uh, because we had a, a situation where one of the, the previous recipients of the pension plan wanted to cash out and we couldn't. So we had to switch, uh, move the fund around in order to accommodate that. And then shortly thereafter, the company that we moved to stopped doing that particular type of pension plan, which means we had to move it yet again into another company. So just that, that churn of paperwork created a lot of questions and understandably so. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, if we don't have anything else there, we'll move on to the next item. Okay, the next item is the website. Uh, we actually have moved into the next phase of development around the website where they're going to be populating uh, some of the content on the website. Uh, we had a meeting with them, it was yesterday mm -hmm. uh, in the evening <laughs> where you, I have, you, you scrunched up your eyebrows like I, yesterday. Yes, it was yeah, yesterday. I have yeah. no concept of time anymore. With COVID, it's, is it a day that I have to wake up for work or isn't it? <laughs> 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 um, but we're, we're progressing along nicely there. They're going to be in contact with us uh, simply because a lot of the existing material that's out on the website is, is kind of outdated. Uh, so they can get some of the historical stuff that we have out there for the prior years, 2015 and before. Uh, but some of the newer stuff about who the officials are, the page that we want to set up about meeting the officials or community association or the fire department or anything like that, uh, we're going to have to work with them on the act of creating some of those materials. Um, likewise, a lot of the, the ordinances and things that we have that are not available in digital copy, uh, we're going to have to scan those. And one of the things that I, I would like to do is, and what is relatively common practice on older documents, is you have a scanned copy of the original available for viewing but you also essentially retype the document so that it's, it's indexable. Um, and the concern that I have around some of the older ones specifically that are scanned in that may have been typed originally is there's a lot of handwriting in certain areas of margins and things like that that uh, OCR tools will not pick up on when you scan it. Um, not to mention having an actual typed copy and a lot of the newer stuff that we have from Andy and Jim and any of the other sources um, do have that original digital copy. So when somebody tries to search for it in a search engine, you won't get weird things where it tries to recognize a word and instead of like saldo, it comes up with platypus. Um, we want to try to avoid that sort of thing and have it be as accurate as possible, but it's just going to be, it's going to be an effort of time. Um, so we'll have a, a situation where we got to put a pot of coffee on and do a lot of typing or try to find some, some volunteers. Yep. Hundred words a minute. <laughs> yep. So try to try to enlist some interns or volunteers to assist, but uh, we're we're into that next stage. So we should, uh, if they keep on their stated time frame, we should have the website live by the middle of October. 
Any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, fantastic. Next item on the agenda is the Road Project 2020. Uh, I've still not gotten any additional quotes from Franklin about the overlay work. So at this point, and I had a, a brief conversation with Jim McCarthy on this, uh, I'm gonna work on getting the measurements and the requirements and things that Reber and Zerbe used to produce that quote and get it added into the, the bid packet for the road work for next year. So when we put that out early, it would consist of both the oil and chip work that we wanna have done along with any of the remedial work that has to be done in preparation of doing that oiling and chipping. Um, one of the, the kind of unintended consequences on this is if we get it out really early in the year, that's the best spot to get good pricing. And if we have everything lumped together, it's that much more attractive of a bid packet. And we'll actually re realistically have a cost savings because we'll have one firm doing that. And we're not having to have people come and go, um, multiple groups, multiple times, et cetera. Um, are, are you, Irene and Jim, are you in a kind of in a, a general agreement of, of that path forward on the road work? Yes. I say, because I think even if we put pedal to metal right now, with it being the, the end of August, uh, we don't have a lot of time to, to execute that road work, let alone even get it out, get it advertised, and, and go through the, the proper motions that we have to do for something like that. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the road crew, the safety gear. Uh, currently, the road crew does not have enough or uh, really any of the correct safety gear, vests, sweatshirts, helmets, uh, identification. John Seleski, who is our emergency management coordinator, uh, coordinator, is working on getting quotes around this, and we're working on getting the, the needed things set up with the, uh, uh, I apologize, I always forget the name of it, Irene, the, the emergency response place that sells the supplies. There's rapid response, rapid. and then there's uh, Whitmer's. Hang on just a second. <laughs> Josh, Josh, take it out with the legal. Not, my son's trying to heat up something in a plastic container. Hang on a second. <laughs> Don't want to have your house burned down during Call the meeting. Call the fire company. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, while we're talking about emergency response. Um, okay. Um, uh, all right. So, no, I got the numbers. Um, uh, our, and I emailed everything over to Sue as far as the quotes go. They should be in your packet. Uh, packet one or packet two? I don't know. That's fair. I, I can tell. <laughs> that's okay. I can that's about where it where it cut me off. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll tell you briefly, uh, between Whitmer, Whitmer's and um, Rapid Response, Whitmer's carries Carhartt products. I don't know if anyone has a preference for a specific brand. Rapid Response had a number of various brands. The information I sent over uh, is for sizes up to extra large. I don't know if any of the guys are bigger than that. Anything over an extra large is like a 2 to $3 increase. Um, Rapid Response will letter the um, items, I think, at a cost of $15 per piece. So that kind of takes care of the price difference between Whitmer's. John didn't find out if Whitmer's actually will um, label it because at the very least, I think the vests should have Marion Township on the back of them, whether or not we want them to say road crew and have three vests for supervisors, because that's something we can just toss on on top of your regular coat. I don't know if the supervisors really need um, a jacket. So I looked at vests. There's two different kinds, one that had holes in it for breathability one that didn't they all had the reflective stripes on them all of them were that really bright yellow green color i looked at sweatshirts pullovers versus zip ups again it's whatever preference people have i looked at rain jackets and then i looked at, at parkas um i think the parkas can be broken down so that that outer layer can serve as a rain jacket whether or not we want to do both or whatever at the very least, the guys need safety vests. Um, I did get a number on helmets. I think John may have that information. So um, I have to go back to Whitmer's and find out if they're going to letter it, if, if not, etc. But then again, it's, it's a brand thing. I've had Carhartt stuff last like forever. Um, you know, if, if everyone wants to go take a look at what Rapid Response has, um, there's different levels of performance of all kinds of, of products so again it, it's whatever everyone's preference but there's definitely a price difference between the two you know we're talking like 15 to 20 dollars per item between the two and to a point it's it's good to be 
fiscally responsible, but there are some times where you get what you pay for. And this is something that we're, we're hoping to have as an investment that we, we buy this now and we don't have to buy more of these for like another 10 years. Yeah. Um, so I would, I would say bare minimum, we should have vests, we should have helmets, and then... At least some kind of an outer jacket. Yeah, I was going to say probably a rain jacket or two. Yeah. I, would, I would agree with you that we don't necessarily have to letter the supervisors or even, let, even letter the road crew. We could go the route of getting a, a Velcro on patch or something like that. That if you're the road crew, you slap the Velcro on okay. patch or if you're supervisors or whatever. Uh, Marion Township across the back. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that would be the, the thing that I would want to have lettered is the, the thing that's going to be the, uh, the same no matter who's wearing it. And that's right. Marion Township. So uh, how many do you think or how, how many does John think that we need to have handy? Uh, obviously, we don't necessarily we don't have a huge road crew, but we don't want to necessarily buy uh, like more than what we have in terms right. of personnel. So five, uh, is there five road crew? Is that correct, Sue? So I came up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I was going to say, I think, I was gonna say, I think there's ten well, or eleven if you count include, everybody. Yeah, that's including you guys, yeah. Tony and Dave. So it's Butch, Kevin, Liam, Don, Frank, John, because he's technically yep. road crew, yep. um, Dave, Tony, and then the three of you. So that's eleven. I think we could exclude John. On if he doesn't have enough of his own gear by now, then <laughs> <True. laughs> take him off that list because he has everything. I'm sure he would want a vest just identifying him as Marion Township. And I guess, like for identification purposes, I'm sure we could make ourselves a little ID badge or something like, like a lanyard here yeah. and, and, and to, to make so if we want everyone to have a lanyard or a clip on tag as to because in like an EMC situation. And John could probably go into that a little bit more with you. You always want to have an identification as to who and what you are, what you're doing. So that if there's a scene that needs to have specific people doing specific tasks, because it's easier to go up and spot someone like, okay, I know what you are, rather than going through the whole process of who you are, blah, 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 conversation. So like even a lanyard identifying who people are would be something that's, that's pretty simple. But I'm sure John can go into more detail about that. I apologize he's not here. So it's okay. Um, it's okay. Yeah, I mean... I think vests for everyone at the very least, if the guys want at least a rain gear and of course helmets for, for everyone, I think that's that's an important part of, of, of what minimum that we need. Okay, so I'm, I'm hearing like 11 vests, 11 helmets, maybe like three or four rain jackets. Yep. And honestly, it would be kind of nice to have a parka, but I think when people go out and plow, they're probably right. going to, to dress to their own level of comfort, especially if once they're in the car or the, in the truck in that instance, they have the heater on and everything else. They may the not. Guys, the guys good. usually wear a zippered um, sweatshirt. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to consider that. Okay. To you. Yeah, there are zipper sweatshirts available. And, you know, how about we also get feedback from the guys what they prefer to wear too? Because mm -hmm. yeah. that exactly. might be, you know, some guys might hate raincoats. If you've worn a raincoat outside, some of them aren't very breathable and you just sweat like crazy so if we get a little bit of feedback from the guys what they prefer so okay so we'll put a list together and i'll, I'll make some calls to the road crew guys and see if what their general thoughts and opinions are yeah we don't need a motion to prove that do we, we can, can't you just go out and buy them whenever you decide um i think generally you're supposed to have a motion yeah. especially on the the, the size yeah, of the spend I, I, yeah i think yeah th this this yeah, I mean, it's not going to be crazy expensive, but... No, but it's... it's, definitely it's over. It, I was going to say, it's more than just buying, like, post-it notes or office supplies. Yeah. Right. Well, it can be crazy expensive. That's the thing. I mean, a coat one place was $105, a coat another place was $130-something. So, um, you know, I guess let's get some feedback from the guys, what they prefer. We could just give them, like, a, a short list and say, out of these, check off the boxes what you'd prefer to wear. Yeah, because you know, somebody may say I just want a sweatshirt, and you know, everyone's going to get a vest, but you know, just a sweatshirt, or I don't want a raincoat or something. Yeah, yeah. I think the the, the core things because we don't we don't have enough of them, and we we need them for obvious reasons aside, um, certain safety things. Um, vests, helmets. Yep. That's that's the given. That's the core things. Um, whether we get some some sweatshirts that are pullovers or sweatshirts that are zippers or a couple of rain jackets, that that becomes the the question element. We can get some cost figures around that, hopefully in time yeah. for next month's meeting. And then um, to the point that was raised, we can just make a motion around it. It's always better to be safe than sorry. 
just make, yeah, then, make a motion if there's any question. Yeah. I can make up a small slip of paper. We can give it to the guys and this way I could also figure out their sizes. Yeah, good point. Good yeah. point. Because I know, for example, Leon isn't going to wear the same size that I do. And <laughs> Jim isn't going to wear the same size that Leon does or that I do. So um, that would be a good point. We get kind of a general consensus on sizes and, and try to get something that kind of fits for for yeah. the majority, if not a couple here, a couple there. And I mean, I hate to envision a, a kind of a scenario where we're all out, but weather's getting more severe. Anything can happen that would call all of our resources out where we need to manage an incident, you know. And even if it's just John directing us and telling us, you know, I need you here. I need you to talk to those people. I need you here to do this. I mean, it, it, there's definitely a cohesiveness and it's much easier for the public to say there's the person in the vest they're a public official or there's someone i can ask for direction and it communicates a, a more effective response to a scenario so it's it's honestly it's the yeah. same sort of thing that we've been approaching with the bookkeeping and everything else is we're trying to move towards an organized unified routine fashion of doing things mm -hmm. that's going to stay the same whether it's us on the board or somebody else was that thunder? That, that was thunder. I was actually just kind of parsing that in my head. <laughs> that was like, did, did one of my children just to get into something they shouldn't? That's what or, I thought. Or is that the weather? Um, no, it's, it's the weather. I think we're going to have some storms later this evening. Um, and, and I guess I could look into lanyards and identification, things like that. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll uh, work with John. Well, we might actually be able to produce some of our own identification things yeah, that's what I and, figured. and just get it printed out and laminated on a, a decent thick card stock or, or like plastic or something like that i'll look mm -hmm. into doing that because ideally we should have identification for the road crew for us as supervisors for gary as the seo um anybody who's operating in an official township capacity should be able to um you know with a, with a reasonable semblance of authority produce an identification saying you know yeah. i'm not just this random person that showed up at your house um or I'm not just this random person doing weird things to the road. Um, <laughs> well, that's what it looks like right now. So. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if we're, we're good there, the next item on the agenda is the office window replacement. And I know we had gotten an updated quote from Mike's remodeling. Uh, we gave him the opportunity to rebid the job around uh, a similar s sort of requirement that the other company had done, which was a, a fixed upper transom, one large window, and then a small operable window on the, the lower portion. Um, the two between Mike's and Kissling are, are very close, very, very close. They're within, without going into the dollars and cents figures of the actual uh, quotes, about 150 bucks of each other. Um, Peter. Yes. There was an email when I checked them just tonight, just before the meeting, um, from um, Creekview, wanting oh. to know if we're still doing the windows or not doing the windows. So I don't know if you want somebody to call him and have him come in and measure or... Yeah, absolutely. I wasn't going to... Actually, before we go that route, do we want to make a decision tonight or do we want to wait until next month, try to get Creekview in for a third estimate? Based on the two, I'd imagine it's probably going to be pretty close. That they're, they're pretty much spot on to each other. I thought the difference was only about $52. Um, well, without saying it out loud, one of them ends in $858 and the other one ends in $2,900. So it's $142, if my mental math is right. Okay. Or, wait, no, hold on. 850. No, you're right. It is only $42. I apologize. That is, uh, that is an error on my part. Um, so very, very minimal difference, even less than I originally let on. Um, do we really want to pursue the third quote or do we want to want to potentially move on the windows? Because the sooner we get that done, the less we end up spending on keeping the office cool during the summer we don't have to worry about water getting in when it rains. Like it's probably going to start doing imminently. Right. Um, just all around, it's it needs to be done on the whole building and the office where we have a, a physical person spend the majority of their time is the best place to start it. I personally think we ought to just award it. They've all been notified for months. Mm. 
and only those two have bothered to give us the quotes. Okay. Mm -hmm. To that point, just as a, a matter of discussion before we re really move into decision making, I believe Mike is a resident in our community. I don't know about Kissling. I don't know Kiss, if they're. Kissling is from Mobile Store. Okay. And uh, Mike lives on Canal Road. Yeah. Given I guess the preference would be for Mike. Yeah, as I say, given the preference, I'd like to keep the business local. Yeah, well, because the fact that Mike came in and did an estimate, and when we called him and said, hey, can you reconfigure this, he was willing to come back and do it and get us something promptly. Okay. So I'll, I'll make the motion to authorize Mike's remodeling to replace the windows in the office for the sum of $2,900. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda so, is... So, no, wait, who's going to call him and let him know? Uh, Jim, you were in contact with Mike throughout the course of this process. Would you be able, be able to give a call? Okay. Now, we'll tell him we'd like to have it done ASAP. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> even, even better, even better. <laughs> Okay, the next item on the agenda is election day. Uh, that is Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. Uh, the building will need to be open for the poll workers to arrive at 6 a.m. Uh, I can take care of uh, opening the doors and disabling the alarm uh, system. Look, can I interject here? Certainly. I have the day off. I'm not going anywhere. I do not mind getting up at 5.30, coming in here to unlock it, going back to bed. <laughs> okay. It's not a problem. I'm, I'm usually up horrendously early, but I'm usually up horrendously early working. With that said, I can so, make a quick beeline over and, and open things up. But if you're willing to do it, that saves uh, yeah, me some, it, some headache. I mean, you have to work that yeah. day. I don't. So, I, I, like I said, I can go back home and go to bed. <laughs> in that case, I appreciate it. Sure. Um, so I think that, that has worked well in the past, that we give them a key. One of us yep. comes in in the morning, disables the alarm, locks the door back up. They show up, they unlock. At the end of the day, they lock the door. And I can go out in the evening after the polls close. And yeah. rearm the alarm system. That's, that's I know that some sometimes they were here until ten. I think with these new machines, they're not here that long anymore. But it doesn't um, matter to me whether it's ten, eleven, midnight, yeah. one in the morning. I can I can run out and do it. That's not a okay. not a big deal. Um, so I think in the past we have motioned, and it, I think last year yeah. we actually split it in two. Uh, one was to authorize giving them the key, the front door key for the day. And the other motion was around uh, disabling the alarm system in the morning and then re-enabling at night. Um, so I will, I will do it in that order, Sue. Uh, I'll make the motion to give the uh, poll workers a key to the front door for the township building for the day. Okay. Jim, Jim or Irene, do you have a second? Oh, second, sorry. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Hi. It was such a short motion. <laughs> I, try, I try to keep them brief when I can. Um, <laughs> the next motion is to uh, open the building and disable the alarm system in the morning for the poll workers and then rearm the alarm system after they've left at night. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Stouchburg Road flooding that was happening at the Jeremy Troutman Poultry Operation Driveway. They have done some regrading and there was some matting installed to provide better drainage to the existing stream. Uh, McCarthy Engineering provided photos. I've put them out in the, the Roadmaster section of the Google Drive if you want to look at them. Uh, Sue also provided them via email. There's some black and white copies in the, the packet that was sent out in the email as well. Um, we don't really have to take any additional action there. They are fully aware and working towards long-term resolution of the issue. Uh, based on what McCarthy Engineering told me, they are actually even working towards putting in a, a small swale to assist in, in drainage there. Um, so we don't have to take any action as a board that's progressing nicely without any intervention and any intervention on our part. It's it's exactly what is supposed to happen in this sort of situation. 
Next item on the agenda is the 904 Performance Recycling Grant for 2019. Uh, we had been notified by the DEP that our recycling grant was uh, kind of on hold or, or not available to us because of an order that we had against us from last year. Uh, we very quickly sorted that out, that it was a, more of a warning than an actual order of things, and it was not fully in, in effect. Uh, because of that, we have received or will be receiving the, the $2,587 grant for recycling. Next item on the agenda is the Western Berks Planning Commission. Uh, they have not been meeting because of COVID uh, and just social distancing and everything else that has been in play. Uh, they will be having a meeting on September 17th at the Robazonia Borough Hall at 7 p.m. Uh, I will be in attendance and uh, as we discussed at the workshop meeting, um, if possible, Irene and Jim, I would suggest you be in attendance as well if you can. Um, the, the whole zoning thing isn't terribly complicated. Most of the changes that we made, uh, if you haven't gotten a chance to read over it, was uh, substantive in the sense that it adds to their, their existing thing. We weren't changing really much of anything else. Uh, I think the biggest thing that got defined was there was nothing in the zoning, uh, should we go the route of putting public sewer in, that was public sewer and not public water. All the other stuff was either all on lot or all municipal service. So that's, that's the biggest addition to the, the zoning in that respect. Everything else kind of fell into line with what was uh, pre-existing for the other municipalities uh, from our part. Uh, things like the community core being called town center um, mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh, Andy, I think you actually, you represent Robazonia as well and some of the other involved municipalities, don't you? Robazonia and Wommelsdorf. Yeah. Yeah, and th this meeting um, would not have happened, but for our request. So this, this meeting is, is solely due to, to our request to have it. And, you know, I think the only topic for discussion is Marion Township. Oh, good. I, I was uh, unaware that we were there. there. there might, I thought there oh. might have been. Good. I'm sorry, Peter. Oh, no, go, go I, ahead. I thought there was going to be an issue. Uh, I thought there was going to be an issue coming out of uh, North Heidelberg, but I'm not sure that's going to be on the agenda. So it might be might be a quick meeting. Even better. And uh, I was unaware that we were the kind of the sole agenda item. So I'll have to pass along a, a special thank you to them because I know we've we've wanted to keep this moving, but just the state of the world as it's been, we we all yeah. understand that it's not been really a viable thing. Yeah. As we get closer to, it, just remind me. I'll let you know if I'm available. We'll do. And if all else fails, I'll, I'll be there. I was at the, the last one where we, we tried to tried to do it and it just didn't pan out. Um, next item on the agenda is the Marion Township Community Association liaison position. Uh, we had discussed in, in previous months about transitioning that to Jim from Irene, uh, since Irene has a, a lot on her plate right now with the, the general treasury stuff with the books and everything else. And I'm doing a lot of the, the technological stuff as well as just general administrative items. Um, Jim has graciously agreed to do it. So I think really at this point, the only thing we need is a, a formal motion to transition Irene from being the liaison to the community association over to Jim. Moved. Okay, so uh, <laughs> uh, I'll second Jim's motion. <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Berks County Association of Township Officials Annual County Convention. Uh, they will be holding it this year. It's going to be outside at the Ole Fire Fairgrounds uh, in the outdoor pavilion on October the, the 10th at 11 a.m. Uh, it's a little bit of a departure from their usual, which is usually indoors and in the evening. Um, so uh, I think anybody who is uh, a supervisor or an auditor or, uh, and keep me honest here, Sue, uh, certain other members of like the road crew and things like that are eligible to go. No, um, no, uh, it's only for officials. Only for officials. So Thank you. it's uh, supervisors, elected auditors and tax collectors and okay. treasurer, secretary treasurer. Okay. John can't come with me. <laughs> I did actually, I did email, um, 
Shirley today and asked if spouses can come because uh, I don't know if they can or not. Um, but she hasn't gotten back to me. Yet. But he's the EMC. I know. Well, it doesn't. I know, but it doesn't say that. So <laughs> I can ask that question. <laughs> Yeah, he'll work his way in there. Trust me, if he wants to go, he'll get in there. Yeah. So with that said, uh, certain people are eligible to go. I'm probably not going to be able to because of just general scheduling constraints. However, Jim, Irene, uh, if we want to put the line out to the, the elected auditors, um, at, at, you are able to go, but to, uh, we don't have to necessarily do we even have to do we have to approve people to go if they're already yes, authorized? that's okay. why i have a motion there okay. because um because i have to let her know how many people are going okay i mean there is no cost to the township but i have yeah. to let her know yeah and then i yeah. understand that they they're they're paying for food they want to have a, a reasonable mm -hmm. forecast of how much to get um i don't know my schedule that far in advance I mean, but if i'm authorized to x y and z to go and yeah. and then get our speakers yeah yeah okay because so I'll, they need a response by october 1st so if we wait till next month that's kind of kind of close yeah i mean we could do it at the workshop meeting potentially mm -hmm. uh, but i mean if you want to authorize yeah no i see your i see your go. point that we could just authorize and then we get the rsvps they just turn them over to you and away they go yeah yeah Okay, so I'll, yeah, I'll make the motion to authorize any approved individuals to attend the Berks County Association of Township Officials Annual County Convention for 2020. Second that. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, the last item on the agenda. <laughs> is the Act 537. Uh, I will be continuing to work with McCarthy Engineering around the memo that we're going to send over to DEP uh, around the changes that we want to make. Um, we had a, a couple of brief conversations uh, late last month, early this month around some things, and then we just didn't have overlaps in our schedule. Uh, I think Jim was on vacation for one of those weeks, which kind of took that entirely out of the equation. Uh, but we are going to get something crafted over so that we're, we're not just asking for something, we're asking for something and providing actual verifiable reasons and uh, backing into uh, regulatory and legal uh, precedents on why we, we would like to do that. So we want to go in there polite because I, I think we have a, a good, right now we have a, a decent relationship with DEP. Nobody's upset about anything presently, which is good. That's the best way to have it. Um, and we can, we can make a, a, a gentleman's or gentle lady's request <laughs> uh, to make those changes because uh, they, they seem receptive to the idea. And as we talked about in previous months, they're, they're willing to entertain that idea and do a preliminary review, which is, is something they haven't done for a very long time. So we want to make sure that that's as neat and crisp and precise as it can be before we turn it over. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the last kind of Act 537 related thing that I, I want to mention is um, I'm and this is entirely on me. I, I have not finished the on-lot management ordinance notice that goes out to people. Uh, with that said, it's not as bad as it could be because of the way the ordinance is worded. Uh, a lot of people have actually a grace period in that first year where they, they wouldn't actually have to pump out. There's the, a period of time where they can essentially just bump into the next period. Um, so I'll be trying to get that finished. I had a, a couple of things that I was wrestling with around wording and then spacing on the, the actual letter itself. I wanna keep it to one page and uh, have a, a little bit of a, a visual aid there in terms of where the, the differentiation in the properties uh, falls within the township, who's zone one, who's zone two, who's zone three, uh, and, and not have it, like I said, spill over to a second page. Uh, generally speaking, if it's more than one page or double-sided, people tend to not read it. So. I'll be working on getting that finalized and then we'll, we'll work on doing a, a bulk mailing to everybody in the township that is a, a property owner so that they, they're aware of the change and the requirements uh, for should anybody do it the remainder of this year, uh, but more than likely preparing for next year or the following year for, for conforming to that on lot management schedule. Okay, uh, last thing we have is the comments. Uh, I'll start. The police report really didn't have a, a lot of uh, excitement or activity. 
most noteworthy thing is there was a, a DUI arrest, uh, three traffic accidents, and uh, four traffic stops. There were actually six tickets written for, four, for those four traffic stops uh, and possibly the DUI. Um, so it's, uh, other than that, relatively quiet, but uh, in, in some categories, a little, little more exciting than usual. Um, the only other thing that I would like to mention is there's a, been a concern from one of the, the residents on uh, William Penn Boulevard about some, some flooding and some drainage. Uh, we are actively looking at that, and I will be in contact with the property owner. If there's anything that we can do as a municipality to assist, uh, we've had the road crew out. They've looked at the pipe. I'm actually going to go out personally and look at the pipe, too, to see if there's maybe a situation with sediment uh, or things that have shifted since we first looked at it, possibly tree branches or debris or anything. Uh, but beyond that, we'd actually start entering into the realm where the runoff from one property to the other would actually be a concern between the two property owners rather than the township in any any stretch of the imagination in that particular equation um, so i want to get some some additional facts get some understanding and then i'll be reaching out to the the property owner to to talk to them and, and let them know kind of what the situation is and how to proceed um, i did have a, a brief conversation with jim mccarthy about this and depending on what the the long-term plans are for the the property that's producing the runoff uh, there may be some things that they could they could pursue through berks county conservation via dean drunken miller or one of the other people there um, or there could be things that might be enforceable by uh, if they go to build on that property from a from a uh, planning standpoint so we'll have to see as things develop, but the uh, first step is to make sure that we understand the situation as it exists today, and then relay that to the property owner. At this time, I don't have any additional comments. Irene, do you have anything? Yeah, just this evening, I had a neighbor contact me. It's actually with respect to the cold patch. Um, he was a little bit surprised when he came around and there was the guys didn't have anything out saying that they were working on the road no cones no nothing so if we could get some signage out and make sure the guys use it you know way in advance because he didn't want to hit the guys you know he was like okay you know hey there's people working here they need to definitely delineate where they're working um he was a little bit perturbed about the actual cold patch the product itself getting on his vehicle but um, I guess if he knew it was there in the first place, he wouldn't have driven over it. So if there's some way to, you know, these guys, when they're going out, have some signage saying we're working on the road, whatever the case is, so people have some idea. How, how long does it take that stuff to dry? I'll be honest, I'd have to look. It's, okay. it's not a super long time, but it's not, it's not short either. It's not like they're going to, it's not going to be cured in 20 minutes after they put it down. No, no. Um, so that would kind of be a situation where we'd have to maybe get some, some signage for like road work or uh, yeah. caution, cold patch or something like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I want the guys to be safe more so than anything else. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the fact that he expressed this concern, I asked him to contact the office and write up as, as a complaint. Um, but, you know, the, the fact that my, my biggest concern was like, you thank God none of our guys have been hit or anything. So yeah, and that comes back to the vests and the, yeah. the safety equipment being visible. And we have cones, yeah. so it may be a situation where I just have to instill with them that when you go to do cold patching, you set up cones thirty feet down the road so that you don't have mm -hmm. people come flying up on you and mm -hmm. be surprised that you're you're out in the middle of the road working on putting cold patch in a pothole. Mm -hmm. We have to instill good practices in everyone. Absolutely. So I'll make that as a, a takeaway item for myself. Anything else? Arbor? I'm done. Thank okay. You. Yeah. Jim. I'm just looking forward to working with the Township Community Association and assisting them specifically on improving the playground that, uh, you know, that Irene has been working with them on. And, uh, you know, our kids in our community deserve to have a great place to go and and work off some energy. I agree, and I look forward to seeing the results of uh, everybody's labors, uh, you, me, Irene, the community association. It would be a, a wonderful thing once COVID clears to, to be able to, to potentially move forward on a, a big change on the playground. Yeah. Okay, Andy, do you have any comments? Yeah, I have a couple things. Um, the first thing is that we're keeping our eye on Harrisburg as it relates to Act 15 of 2020. That was the state's COVID legislation that 
allowed certain things like remote notarization, it, it extended the tax deadlines, and it allowed remote meetings to occur. The thing is with the remote meetings, it, those can only occur and they're only allowed during the time when the state of emergency is in existence for the Commonwealth. So Wolf cleared a state of emergency back in March and it lasted in 90 days until June and then it was extended and it expires at the beginning of September. I'm hoping and presuming that that would get extended again, but I haven't seen any word. So that, that relates to all uh, municipalities and actually not the school districts. School districts um, must have had a strong lobby in Harrisburg, but they're immune from, from that requirement. So they're still allowed to continue remote. So we're just keeping our eye on it, keep everybody posted. But again, that's expiring technically next week. Yeah, please, please keep us in the loop because if we have to switch back to being in the building, uh, we will have to start putting certain mechanisms in place to make sure everybody's safe, whether it's the spacing of, of the chairs, clear marking on the floors, requiring like face masks, uh, hand sanitizer, all that fun stuff. It's going to be, it's going to be something that we have to, to react to very quickly if that does change early to mid September. Yeah. I guess on that note, Andy, if, if someone is, does not want to comply with wearing a mask, are we able to ask them to leave the building? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I, I, haven't, I haven't run across it. There's been questions like that in businesses, and the answers have been all over the board. Um, some businesses have excluded people from from their location, others have not. Um, if you could get us an answer, that's going to be useful. I will do because that. Yep. I anticipate a problem. Yeah, some some municipalities have been meeting in person, and how you know they have had that mandated. I haven't seen anybody violate that. And what some municipalities have done, they'll have like a station to walk in with. Ties are there. They'll have a sign-in sheet right, right there, um, and they'll have masks available too, just in case somebody didn't have one. They'll be ready to go. We probably should get a thermometer. What's that? Yeah, we probably should get one of those those thermometers that everybody's using too. Yeah, the the yeah, touchless like forehead ones. I have, I have we one. Do that at, we yeah. do that in my office every day. You know. We are not open to the public yet, but all of our employees are, are temperatures checked. So more to follow on that. Yeah, that'll, um, be, that'll be interesting to see how that, that develops. Yeah. Um, the other municipalities, I have three of them that have been meeting in person, and there really haven't been any issues, which is good. That's good. Actually, in one municipality, nobody wears a mask. <laughs> I will not, I, I deal with COVID on a daily basis. I will not put anyone at risk. I will comply with CDC guidelines as long as, as they're put out. I, we can, at, behind the desk, we can all sit, you know, a distance apart. I have no problems with that. It's, it's the public that will be invited. They need to sit six feet apart. They need to disperse after the meeting and not socialize in the hallway or in the meeting room. And I think if, if we do have to meet back in person, we need to say, you know, these are the guidelines. We're going to ask that, you know, once the meeting is over, that people don't congregate in the meeting room, that people don't congregate in the lobby. If they want to do so outside in the parking lot. I don't have a problem. Your biggest risk with COVID is indoors. Indoors because the air circulation is not good. We do not have a HEPA filter because we don't have um, central air. We don't have, we don't have the systems available to, um, uh, clean the air properly uh, in our building. So I would ask that everyone, you know, start the meeting with, you know, we're back to in person, but, but these are the rules that we need you to comply. If you can't comply with these, you know, for whatever reason, then we ask that you give up your seat. And then it's going to be limited seating anyway, and it's going to have to be on a first come, first serve basis. So. Yeah. And, you know, political parties aside and how you might feel about the governor. It doesn't really matter because um, 
you know, these mandates apply to municipalities just like they do businesses. So, um, and, I, and I've, I've told all municipalities that, that are meeting in person that as, as leaders of the community, you kind of set the example. So you should be following those guidelines. And the governor does have the authority to issue those orders under the Disease Act. Whether, whether, you know, they're chosen to be followed. <laughs> yeah, right. they're still there. Thing. They're still there whether yeah. people want to follow them or not. Right. The yeah, biggest risk are, are people March. meeting. That last meeting in March, there was enough people in the room that we could never have put them six feet apart. No, yeah. no. Well, and we a, have an older population. Go someplace else, maybe the school auditorium or something? Yeah, we, we could. Um, Another municipality have moved to another room in their building. I don't, we don't have that option, I don't think. But um, yeah, we'd have to we'd have to advertise for that. Right. Yep. So um, I'll keep everybody posted. I think yeah. Dan's yeah. Wave, waving his hand. Let me uh, scroll over and sure. see what. Andy, definitely if we could get us an answer as to how do we deal with someone who doesn't want to comply with the mask mandate. Mm -hmm. What about the social hall in Stoutsburg, which is much larger than the municipal yeah. building? It is a little roomier. That's something that we could certainly entertain as an option. Um, some of the complication comes around getting that, that secured or rented. Sometimes that's easier said than done. I know there's been some delays and complications with that. If we had to move on it quickly, it might not be a sure bet. But to your point, okay. it would have enough space to do it. Yeah. Uh, just as a side note on that, they're, they're actually looking to uh, auction off that building. So that, that may create an additional complication. They may not want to be actively running it out if it's going to be auctioned shortly. Um. Uh, as a side note, some of the people in the community did reach out about uh, the township potentially buying that building. And it's, it's a lot easier said than done uh, for a municipal entity to buy something at an auction because there's a, a, a ream of requirements that goes into how you need to do that. And oftentimes it just simply isn't cost effective or the valuation of the building would make it nearly impossible to, to actually entertain doing that. Um, Andy, not to put you on the spot, if, but if, I, if I've not yeah, that covered is correct. anything, I was going to say, if I've not covered anything, please keep me honest. No, you covered it all. Yeah, absolutely. You have to get an appraisal, and then you can't purchase for less than the appraised value. Um, and, and with auctions, many times that just doesn't happen. The ultimate bid is probably going to be less. Can be done, but difficult. Yeah, I think the only yeah, way that the township uh, yeah. would get it would be if somebody bought it and donated it to us. That's really the only the only yeah, way that it's nice. going to come to us. Yeah. Put that out there. <laughs> well, it's on public record now. If anybody wants to buy the, 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 the fire <laughs> social hall and donate it to us. The, um, the other thing I have is, is a letter that's written to the township <clears throat> that you might not yet have received, and I just saw it today. And it's from John Muir, who's the solicitor for the Wilmersdorf Sewer Authority. And it, it's general, it talks about a, a business or businesses located in the borough of Wimmelsdorf have expressed an interest in purchasing significant sewer capacity from the authority. And they reference the fact that their, the authorities, uh, CHAP 94 report, that one that goes to DEP, had us, the township, in for 240 potential EDUs. And it just says that the anticipated purchase of sewer capacity by these businesses will lessen the ability for other potential customers to come online um, because it's eating up their capacity. So um, reading in between the lines there, the business is J.F. Martin on, on 422 and 419, who um, recently underwent an expansion of their facility and they're purchasing probably about 140 EDUs. It's like 35,000 gallons a day. Um, there, there still is capacity and there's still enough for 240 EDUs, but it's getting tight. Okay. So that's just a, a letter 
to put I guess, the township on notice that hey, you know, we're we're allocating a significant amount of our capacity to to a business within the borough. Okay. Very very good. So to that know. I'll send out to everybody. Yeah, I'll send it out to everyone, and I'll. Well, it will be coming to the township regardless, but I'll email it to everybody and uh, to Jim McCarthy. Okay, very good. Anything additional, Eddie? No action. No action to be taken, just for your consideration. Okay, that's all I have. Fantastic. Thank you, Sue. Do you have anything? Nothing. Okay. Very good. In that case, I will adjourn the meeting. The time is, or I'm actually motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 8.47 p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, and we'll be in touch. All right. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye.